Hey everybody, Bob Murphy again with another Econ Moment. Today I want to spend a little bit of time talking about minimum wage laws. Now, a minimum wage law says that if an employer is found paying below a certain floor, a certain minimum wage, to any of his workers, then the employer gets fined. And the whole rationale, of course, for these laws is to help the unskilled worker, somebody who left to the vagaries of the free market, might get paid a dollar an hour, and people say, come on, that's, that's unconscionable. Somebody can't live on that. And so the government comes along and says, okay, it's illegal to pay someone less than, let's say, five fifty an hour, whatever the number is, depending on the state. So what economists have pointed out for a long, long time, it's a very basic point, is that Paradoxically, minimum wage laws actually hurt the very group that they're supposed to be helping, namely unskilled workers. So let me just walk you through the logic here. It's, it's pretty elementary when you think about it. An employer, unless he or she is doing somebody a favor, like hiring uh, a relative or something just to give a kid a job for those sorts of purposes, but in general, an employer is hiring someone to make money. Right? That's, that's the reason you do it. Or at the very least, an employer is not going to lose money on a worker. So if there's a particular worker who is not very skilled and for whatever reason only generates, let's say, $4 an hour worth of extra value for the employer, and what do I mean? I'm just saying the employer figures out, okay, without using this worker at all, I make such and such profit. If this person came and worked for free for me and put in an hour of labor, given what, what my operations are doing without that person, now that person comes and gives me an hour of his or her labor, how much does my profit go up? And if it goes up by $4, then there's a sense in which that worker's labor hour is worth $4 to the employer. So now, if the government comes along and says, it is illegal for you to hire any worker and pay less than, let's say, five fifty an hour, what's going to happen? Is that employer going to say, oh, okay, well, shucks, I guess I'll pay the person five fifty an hour. No, the law doesn't require you to hire people. All the law says is that if you do hire someone, it is illegal to pay less than the minimum wage, which in this example we're assuming is five fifty an hour. So you see how that works. Unless we assume that the employer is an altruist, unless we assume that the employer just feels like making a gift and losing money by hiring the worker, what's going to happen? The employer is not going to hire that worker. In fact, anyone whose productivity is less than that minimum floor cutoff won't be able to get a job unless somebody just decides to give charity. And so since the whole point of the law is to protect people from unscrupulous business people, it's hard to understand why someone thinks that the minimum wage law is going to help unskilled workers. In other words, if you're the sort of person that thinks they're necessary to protect unskilled workers from these rapacious business people, these employers who are just real greedy and just very begrudgingly give even dimes, well then the last thing in the world you want to do is tell these business people, by the way, if there happens to be someone who applies at your job or at your company, whose productivity is less than this certain amount we're going to pick out of the air, then we expect you to pay that person that minimum and lose money. So please go ahead now and, and hire all these unskilled workers and lose money on them. You see, that, that's crazy. That won't happen. Now, let me deal with one typical uh, objection or response to the argument I just gave. Some people will hear that and they'll say, okay, you're right. For the small segment of the unskilled workforce out there who really just, they can't even produce that bare minimum that the minimum wage requires, you're right. Those people won't be able to find a job and then we have other programs installed for them like food stamps and whatever and job training to try to get their productivity up. But, these critics might continue, what you're overlooking, Murphy, is that there's a whole range of people who have productivities that are higher than that minimum floor, 
but you're crazy if you think employers are going to pay that to them in the absence of the minimum wage. So in other words, the point of the minimum wage law being set, let's say, at 550 is not to affect workers whose productivity is only $4 an hour. Rather, these critics might say, the point is if somebody's making, if somebody brings in $7 an hour worth of productivity to the employer, we want that person to at least get paid five fifty. Whereas left to the vagaries of the free market, the uh, that employee might only get paid three dollars an hour, two dollars an hour. So we're just establishing a floor for the vast majority of workers. And then you're right. Then we got to worry about what happens for the few people who can't even get above that minimum threshold. Okay. Well, I have a very simple re response to that. If your worldview is correct, in that in the absence of minimum wage legislation a bunch of workers would be getting paid $1 and $2 an hour, and then it's the minimum wage law that sort of boosts them above that, that threshold, well then, if that's true, why isn't it the case that just about every worker right now gets paid the minimum wage, right? Why, why don't brain surgeons get paid the minimum wage? Why don't lawyers get paid the minimum wage? Why don't professional baseball players get paid the minimum wage? How come all the employers don't just conspire to hold their wages down. And those, that sounds absurd, but just think it through and answer the question. Why is it? Well, because if some employer, some hospital was paying a brain surgeon the minimum wage, some other hospital would bid them away. And even for less glamorous occupations, the vast majority of people get paid higher than the minimum wage. And why? It's because of competition. And so if you understand that competition ensures that a very large fraction of the workforce gets paid more than a minimum wage right now, then it's hard to understand what you think the minimum wage is doing except making it impossible to get a job for the people whose productivity happens to fall below that threshold. And the la last point I want to make is the, the effect is insidious because for a lot of people, if they could just get their foot in the door, it's not like they would be condemned to earning $2 an hour for the rest of their career. But for people with low skills, or people who for various reasons employers perceive as having low skills, like somebody who just gets let out of prison or something and the employer doesn't want to take a chance, maybe those people could get their foot in the door if they accept the job working for $4 an hour. And then they prove themselves. They show up consistently on time, they learn skills on the job, the employer starts to trust them, and then they get promoted and they get raises. But the point is, right now, with the minimum wage legislation in place, they can't even get started. Unless the employer thinks right off the bat this worker is going to bring in at least as much as the minimum required by the legislation, not going to get hired. So this is another example of where government intervention designed to help a certain group actually hurts those people. And that's been today's Econ Moment with me, Bob Murphy.